Hello there, it's Linda Hill here reporting from Australia. I'm reporting on things astrological, Sabian symbol and eclipse and Mercury retrograde and Pluto going direct and Saturn going into Sagittarius. I mean it's a really really an enormous time. We have this uh, total lunar eclipse happening in um, uh, September's total lunar eclipse happening on uh, Sunday in the United States and on Monday in Australia. And it's a big one. It's a very big one. And I've been talking about uh, what's going on for quite some time and I have made other videos about uh, the current traversing of the North Node over the supergalactic center which spans from about, uh, well it is, the 28th degree of Virgo to the 6th degree of um, Libra and uh, it is said where we're meant to connect with the mind of God and uh, it's very much about the law of attraction and teaching and knowing and uh, gathering with like-minded people and an ascension in consciousness and identifying where we may feel stuck in situations where we're pinned like a butterfly to a to a board, you know, to a in a frame, and uh, where we're not really um, looking after our needs so much, and uh, how we need to, you know, move ourselves out of our places that we we feel that we're trapped or stuck, or it can be ideas that we're really stuck on that don't do us any favors, or you know, mindsets that are going through our minds, or relationships that have us pinned, you know, it can be jobs that have us pinned. Uh, there's so many things that can have us stuck in a, in a reality where we realize that we're actually not uh, manifesting the true uh, possibilities that we have that we could be manifesting. Now the North Node's been telling that story for a very long time. Um, you know, months it started uh, going, uh, the North Node started going over the super galactic center in, um, on, the, on or around June 21st this year. And that uh, North Node continues over the supergalactic center until the end of the first week in December. So this is an ongoing uh, period that's really uh, quite extraordinary. And uh, right now what we have is the North Node, uh, Lilith, um, Juno, the Sun, and Mercury recently went over it. Um, that's the supergalactic center. So they're all on the supergalactic center. I'm going to say it again. The North Node, Lilith, Juno, the Sun... And Mercury went over it recently and Mercury is going back retrograde over the supergalactic center again uh, in this next couple of weeks. We have such a powerhouse of energy that's saying to us that we really need to connect in with our, uh, with our sense of um, doing better, being better, rising above uh, situations that don't do us any good, you know, uh, letting ourselves off that hook. You know, it's, it's quite an extraordinary thing. Uh, in this lunar eclipse, the north node is on the, the light of the sixth race transmuted to the seventh. That is Libra 2. And so the light of the sixth race transmuted to the seventh. And uh, so many uh, people over the last couple of years have been talking about September being a major time of ascension. And a lot of times I hear these sort of things and I think, yeah, well, yeah, sounds good. I don't know. <laughs> you know. And uh, I've had to drop, you know, my skepticism when I saw how the Sabian symbols are backing up that whole idea. Now, I don't think that we're all going to rise into heaven, you know, holding hands and singing Kumbaya or whatever it is that one would say about such a thing, wearing purple. Um, I don't think it's quite about that. I think it's a big shift in consciousness where we, you know, um, uh, realize, you know, sometimes we're, how we're operating on a more base level and how we need to move up with our uh, sense of self, our sense of being, our sense of being in the world, our sense of how we want the world to be. It's a big one. It really is a big one. And, you know, the supergalactic center is such a powerhouse of energy. Now, the supergalactic center is a different powerhouse of energy from the galactic center that's in Sagittarius. So I'm talking about the end of Virgo and the first run of degrees up to six degrees in Libra. That's the supergalactic center. And we're enjoying those joys right now. And it's such an interesting time, you know, I mean, really. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of people are relieved that Saturn's now gone into Sagittarius. I, for one, uh, salute that uh, movement. And I'm having a, uh, a sip of tea to salute that. Mm. We also have um, Pluto going direct, which is a really big thing. And, you know, it's been really pushing us back onto ancient civilizations and the realizations of the of the gifts and the legacy and the and the reality of you know the things that have been left behind from the ancient civilizations that's been a bit of a message from Pluto but um, 
And that's, and that's wonderful. And what we're going to be learning from Pluto over the coming uh, months is very much about remembering to be in our bodies. That's, that's a lot of what these, these messages are that are coming up through the Sabian symbols as Pluto continues traver to traverse uh, Capricorn. I'll be saying more about that uh, at, at some other point, but I want to uh, focus on the chart for the uh, lunar eclipse in this recording. So, um, yeah, so the, the degree of the um, lunar eclipse is Aries 5, and uh, that's the fifth degree of Aries. Now, in case you haven't come across the Sabian symbols before, you always add 1 to the degree, and that's how you get the accurate Sabian symbol. When I say accurate, sometimes you might come up with the wrong one, you know, the wrong one, the one before or the one after. And it's interesting, although you might miss the mark, you know, the story still will be told in a similar way. Mm, it's hard to say. It's like, a, they're like a sequence or a series and they tell a story and they're not independent from each other, although it's a funny one. It's like a, it's a holographic thing, you know, the, the continuation of the degrees. So... The degree of the moon uh, at this lunar eclipse is Aries 5, and it's a white, tri a white triangle is seen. It has golden wings. So this is, you know, image of a triangle, golden wings. And, you know, the fact that it's white, there's got, it's got a lot to do with ascension, this degree. So I find that to be amazing, just, you know, the way the universe lines up in some weird, you know, and amazing and wonderful uh, way, like it's being orchestrated by some amazing uh, consciousness. Well, it is, obviously. Uh, it's just, uh, it's the great mystery. And the white triangle um, of Aries 5 says that it's important for us to rise above those things we find to be um, unpleasant, that don't further us, that don't uh, teach us, that don't, you know, uh, move us forward in whatever way, you know, so we've got to sort of see ourselves, well, we don't have to, but it really helps uh, to see, our, uh, see that white triangle rising above. And it's very much in a, de a degree of ascension. And uh, so I think that's absolutely fabulous. Um, you know, the, the moon is, uh, it, it's a total lunar eclipse and uh, the uh, south node is conjunct the moon and so there's in this in this lunar eclipse, and so the south node, you know, in Aries, conjunct the moon in Aries, the total eclipse of the moon, um, really speaks about um, le leaving behind some of the concerns about me, 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 and moving more into understanding relationships, partnerships, or how we come across to others. It's more about, oh, you know, those liberal keywords, you know, the fairness, the balance, the equality, you know, and it can be where, you know, some of our own personal concerns may certainly definitely need to be addressed but they need to be addressed in a different way and, and perhaps not through some of those knee-jerk reactions that we would normally have about me 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 you know it's that moving past that so what we have in this lineup in uh in this lunar eclipse chart is we have the north node on the light of the sixth race transmuted to the seventh and that is um the second that's libra two we have Lilith right there as well. That's on Libra 4, and that is the, um, uh, it's the, oh, I have to click on it. Sometimes I do this, I do this out of my head. Sometimes it's like, oh, bleh, you know. It's a group of young people sit in spiritual communion around a campfire. And so, you know, Lilith really wants to be together with, you know, Lilith, the, the, you know, the woman that was thrown out of the Garden of Eden, the one that was rejected because she wouldn't accept, you know, um, basically just going to put it like a Scorpio would put it, you know, she wouldn't accept the missionary position, uh, you know, that uh, the patriarchy was foisting on her. And so she was demonized and kicked out of the Garden of Eden, you know, and they grabbed Adam's uh, rib and made Eve. And so, you know, Eve was, um, you know, even, even then Eve stuffed up because she ate the apple. But, um, you know, these stories, they're amazing, aren't they? And uh, it's, uh, well, anyway, um, so, you know, Lilith was kicked out of the Garden of Eden and I'm being extremely flippant, you know, and just throwing it out there and uh, having fun with this rather than being terribly deep and meaningful um, because it's all, you know, it's really in our face now in Australia in particular. There's a lot of domestic violence issues that are coming up and I, I'm, I don't want to bring domestic violence into it when I'm talking about, you know, rising above things that are upsetting us. But, you know, really to be in amongst it, you know, Lilith is really asking for us to understand uh, how, you know, how, does, how devastating uh, domestic violence is. And, of course, it's not just domestic violence. It's people running across the globe. They, you know, they've had their homes bombed. And, I mean, it's just all happening, isn't it? So, and that's, you know, like, like Lilith came out of the Middle East, you know, it's like, you know, it's the whole thing, you know, is, is that, uh, you know, and, and the uh, Mediterranean, the story, 
So um, anyway, Lilith wants to uh, wants us to have people that we gather together with that that uh, help us, you know, that in our journey and you know this raise of raising of the consciousness comes from the North Node on the second degree on the um, the light of the sixth race transmuted to the seventh, and then Lilith on the um, young people sitting in spiritual communion around a campfire. It's saying, you know, we really need to be together with those like minds of those women, those wild women, and that can include men. Men have Liliths, and they have, you know, that feminine side, of course, so no exclusion of men there, that's for sure. Um, or what I mean by that is that, you know, you're hearing so much about this domestic violence that's going on, you know, there's such a need to include men in, in the story, otherwise it's just a polarisation. And that's what Lilith, I think, on the North Node in Libra tends to be talking about. Now where it gets even more interesting in alignment with this is that Juno, you know, which is the asteroid of marriage, uh, is uh, conjunct Lilith, uh, but it's the next degree on, it's conjunct the Sun. So Juno and the Sun are exactly conjunct, and so this is very much about the, the marriage. Uh, you know, some could definitely describe it as the inner marriage, and that would be correct. I think it's, you know, very alchemical, um, but it can be, you know, very social as well, and we can see it happening in our lives around us, that, you know, gathering together in, in a type of marriage and acceptance of each other. Um, so the degree of Juno is a man teaching the true inner knowledge of the new world to his students. That's Libra 5. Um, the degree of the sun is a man teaching the true inner knowledge of the new world to his students. And so this is very much about getting across your message. It's about, um, it's about teaching. It's about learning. It's about um, understanding relationships, obviously. And I mean, that's a really big part of the whole story. You know, we're getting such an enormous hit of Libra. And, you know, the, the moon is eclipsed in Aries, and so it's really, it's, you know, it's saying, you know, it's like let go of the battle is part of the story, you know, and so it's an, it's an interesting conundrum, that one, you know, it's like, well, what about me, me, me? It's sort of like, well, no, actually, in relation to others, that's where we find the, the true sense of self. I hope I'm putting that um, in a way that you can understand what I mean by that. Yeah, it's, it's just such an interesting time. I mean, we've got Mercury went retrograde on the 16th degree of Libra, and the Sabian symbol for that is a boat landing washed away. After the storms of winter, a boat landing is washed away. And this was, you know, the refugees from Syria and, and the, you know, just the, uh, the whole thing. Um, you know, the boat landing washed away can be where we, you know, Mercury's going retrograde and we go, well, do I have that landing anymore? Do I have that place I can be? Do I have that safe harbour? You know, uh, you know, and, and, and the safe harbour, you know, and we, we can have incredibly safe harbours. Most of us do. We're very lucky, you know, very lucky. Um, but, you know, there might be a need to get out the hammer and the nail. There might be a need to move out of where you've been living. There might be a need to rent something or to, you know, um, move on in some way. Uh, that can be where people are leaving and, you know, you have to make your own life in your own way with somebody splitting, you know, because it's Mercury retrograde in Libra, in the middle of Libra and uh, square Pluto. And so, you know, and this and this lunar, uh, this lunar eclipse with Mercury's uh, placement, Mercury is really showing us with this a, a big deal about the uh, Pluto-Uranus square we've been experiencing the last three or so years. You know, it's all been very intense. It's all been very much about what about me. And what we've been seeing a lot is the plutocracy with Pluto in Capricorn really coming to the fore in many ways where, you know, and expanding and, every, you know, things becoming more, um, oh, I want to say, right wing or fascist or something but I don't want to get into too much I don't want to get into a rant um but uh, I could um but uh you know Mercury is uh, Mercury is showing us many more things besides the political uh no Pluto is showing us many more things besides the political thing it's showing us how we fit in and how we're meant to be taking our own inner power back you know to be powerful individuals and not uh you know just dictated to as numbers are you know on a graph or something anyway so Mercury went retrograde on the 16th degree of Libra and is heading back to the first degree of um, uh, Libra. And so this is major because Pluto in the last couple of weeks has been going over the supergalactic centre as has um, uh, the node Lilith, Juno and uh, the Sun. So, you know, so much activity going over the supergalactic centre which is said to link us in with the mind of God. So um, Mercury is showing us that again, 
and we're going retrograde over the supergalactic center. So all of those degrees are being uh, transited again. I feel to point out that the, the supergalactic center's degrees, they really start at 28 plus of Virgo. It's a, a man gaining secret knowledge from an ancient scroll he is reading. And then the next degree on, Virgo 30, is uh, we've had, been having a lot of activity over these degrees. Um, Virgo 30 is um, a man with an urgent task to complete, doesn't look to any distractions. And then the first degree of Libra, uh, which is where the node is, is having a big dance over in the coming uh, couple of months, is um, a butterfly shot through with a dart. And this asks us the question of where we've pinned ourselves because of some ideal or how we should look or some sacrifice or something that we've, you know, we've sort of like been taking a moment in time and stuck it, you know, like a butterfly in a, in a frame with a pin through it. You know, that can be fine and it can really work, but sometimes we need to take that pin out so that we can get our wings again and fly because this is certainly about getting your wings again and flying, this lunar eclipse. It's amazing. The degree following the North Node, and this is the degree that we're going to be, the North Node's going to be going backwards and forwards over these two degrees. The butterfly shot through with the dark and the um, the light of the sixth ray is transmuted to the seventh. So, um, uh, yeah, sorry, just, you know, sometimes you know, uh, uh, uh. Um, sorry about that. Yes, sometimes I find when the, uh, when the phone rings or does something weird, um, and it was doing something weird, then uh, it can be where I've just said something or thought something really significant. So it is really significant. The North Node is on the um, the butterfly shot through with the dart, and over the next couple of months, it's also that's Libra one. It's going to be a Libra two as well. It's going to be vacillating around, and that is the light of light of the sixth race transmuted to the seventh. I think these are you know should be a rather self explanatory. I imagine so. Anyway, so. Libra 1 is the butterfly, Libra 2, this is all the supergalactic centre, Libra 2 is the light of the 6th race transmuted to the 7th, uh, Libra 3 is the dawn of a new day revealing everything changed, uh, Libra um, 4 is uh, a group of young people sitting in spiritual communion around a campfire, Libra 5 is, um, well it's the degree of the Sun and Juno at this uh, lunar eclipse. It's a man teaching the true inner knowledge of the new world to his students and and uh, that's Libra 5. Libra 6 is the uh, a man watches his ideals taking a concrete form before his inner vision and that's that is like the culmination of you know the the law of attraction that degree it's quite extraordinary and uh, that's how I see the span of the supergalactic center. Um, and I and you know I, I spoke to Philip Sedgwick about the galactic center, and he said, "Yeah, well, it's such a big part of the you know the the horizon that you know it would have a um, well, horizon's not the right word, but it will do. Um, it you know it's going to have an orb of you know a number of degrees uh, with the supergalactic center. With me looking at that, I went, oh, it's got to be from that degree to that degree. They are so telling. They are so telling, and uh, you know we've got this so um, ramped up. Now this." Lunar eclipse, you know, I mean, it's got all this uh, promise of, of fabulousness, but it also does have its um, difficulties. Well, you know, you, you give, you know, it's given with one hand and taken away with the other quite often to keep us on our toes, isn't it? It's an interesting time. I'm a little concerned with what's going on, whether it's, you know, um, the race for the elections in the United States or you know, what's happening with this, you know, in Europe with the refugees or the domestic violence thing in Australia, you know, really big, it's big. Uh, it's really gotten quite out of hand. Um, so, um, and there's many more things going on uh, besides that, that's for sure. But I want to come to Mars, you know, because Mars and Saturn are squaring each other at this lunar eclipse and an eclipse can have a feeling like Mars Saturn it you know there can be things that we're brought you know head to head with uh, things that we have to realize that it can be a big wake-up call and an eclipse of course you know it can really um, birth things that can happen and some people say uh, some astrologers talk about this that you know the influence can go for nine months you know into the future I tend to be a bit more holographic about it and I don't think there's any hard and fast rules with that. You know, it depends on what's going on in our lives, what transits we're having, what progressions we're having, you know, all of this sort of stuff. If something major happens to you around this time, it doesn't even have to be this week, but around this time, it will be a reflection of this lunar eclipse taking it in and you will take that into the future, you know, as a theme. And so 
all of these things tend to, um, there's a bit of stickability with uh, eclipses. So Mars is on the second degree of Virgo in this lunar eclipse, and the second degree of Virgo, is a, it's a bit of a gnarly one. It's a, uh, a large white cross stands alone at the top of a, um, a high hill. So it's a large white cross, you know, it's, it's Christianity. Uh, of course, interesting that the Pope uh, visits um, the United States uh, right on this eclipse, right on Mercury retrograde, right on, you know, Pluto going direct, right on Saturn going into Sagittarius. You know, it's all extremely symbolic. But, you know, to have, have Mars on the large white cross that dominates the landscape, that is, you know, one of the takes on that degree, certainly the large white cross is dominating the landscape in so, so many ways. And, um, and that's a bit of a gnarly degree, especially as it's square Saturn on the first degree of Sagittarius. And uh, the first degree of Sagittarius is the Army Veterans Reunion. And so, you know, this, this sort of ha can bring up a bit of... Um, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, you know. And Mars Saturn can feel like we're bashing our head against brick walls and, and all this talk about walls lately, you know, there's, you know, Donald Trump talking about, you know, a, a wall between the US and Mexico and I, I don't know who was talking about a, mall, a wall, possibility of a wall between uh, the US and Canada, you know, and people are talking about putting up walls in Europe. I mean, this is, a, this is the wall. It's like, and it can be where we feel like we hit the wall. Hopefully uh, it's all, uh, it all comes, you know, good uh we have to keep a real we have to be like that triangle with wings we have to rise above things in this and uh and not give things too much credence if they're you know uh, easier said than done i know you know some people are living in their car you know in the western world in australia in 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 america you know it's just like wow you know <laughs> and uh some people are really doing it tough and uh it's not not a particularly easy time but I do feel that it's very exciting and I do feel it's full of promise. I, I think the promise is extraordinary. The degree following Mars, and I always like to look at the degree before and the degree after, the degree following Mars is, um, is um, Virgo 3 and it's two guardian angels bringing protection. And so, you know, this can really bring about the guardian angels turning up. You know, when you get a flat tire, people stop, they help you with your car, it's not a big event. Uh, you know, you need money for your rent and suddenly something happens and you're given $500 or, you know, it's, it's that sort of thing where, and, and you can turn up to help others, you know, I mean, I think that's a very big thing also. It's like, you know, can we donate um, uh, to these refugees? And I don't think it's always a good idea to give money. But if, you know, clothing and, and you know, because I think the governments can do that. <laughs> and we, 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 I don't really want to say it, but I'm, I'm saying it anyway. You know, we don't really know where the money goes with a lot of that sort of stuff. But blankets and pillows and I don't know. That's what it feels like, the two guardian angels bringing protection. You know, Mars is now traversing that area that uh, Venus went retrograde. And uh, Venus is not out of its shadow yet. It's still got a little ways to go. I did look at that earlier. When is it going to be out of its shadow? It's uh, about the... Um, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, I'd forgotten this bit. Uh, Venus is going to be coming out of its shadow the exact day that uh, Mercury goes uh, direct. And so that's an interesting thing. And that's October 9. So it's like, you know, it's like October 9, around that time, you know, it's not like, October 9 hits and, you know, this whole new scene arrives, although that can happen. Um, but it's uh, it's very much that uh, from that time on we might feel more mm, that we're traversing new ground. You know, we've gone over some old ground for some time and now we're, we're ready to traverse uh, new ground. And um, so Mars, to, to recap what I just said, Mars at the moment is on those degrees that Venus went retrograde. Venus is not out of its shadow yet and won't be until October 9. So... Venus is on an interesting degree. It's on the a bareback rider in a circus displays her dangerous skill. And so this can be like, well, do we run into the, the arena? Are we rehearsed? Are we ready? You know, and I think um, many people, you know, many people want to um, take up a new job or, you know, go into a new relationship or whatever it happens to be. I think it's got a lot to do with showing our talent and our skill. And the thing is that we need to feel like we've been, that we're rehearsed. It makes me laugh because I don't rehearse this at all. But I've got so much in my brain, I just have to get it out, you know. But, um, yeah. And, of course, sometimes when we race into the ring un unrehearsed, you know, we can get barked or we can forget things or, you know, stare into space, you know. I mean, that can happen. So Venus's message is, you know, in Leo, no, you know, no less, 
uh, is a bareback rider in a circus displays their dangerous skill. Venus is trine Uranus, and this is a really good thing. We're, we're past the exact trine from Uranus, so it's moving away a little bit after the eclipse, but it's still very much there. It's uh, very much about, um, yeah, running into the ring, taking on life, you know, being prepared to uh, jump on that horse and do your thing. It's also about delivering a message. Uh, you know, it's very much about delivering messages that Venus, the, the degrees it's been traversing are very much about delivering a message. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating where Uranus is. Uranus came right up to and was for, you know, several months on the boxer entering the ring. You know, and it's, you know, you probably can draw a, a parallel with that, with, you know, what's been going on in the Middle East, you know, the boxer is ring, it's fighting, you know, it's like, you know, but it, but for us, you know, more mortal folks that don't take up the sword, you know, it's, uh, we take up a different sword, um, obviously, uh, is we, um, it's been a time where we've been realizing how much we need to step up to the plate, you know, and it's been, but we've been a bit stymied in many ways, you know, as, as, Saturn was finishing those last moments of set, uh, of Scorpio, you know, there was a, a real feeling of like going back over old ground as well after it had been retrograde and it went direct again over those last degrees of Scorpio. So, you know, now Mercury retrograde. So it's really good though because I think, you know, we've had this realisation of in the need, the desire, the possibility of running into the ring, you know, um, because that the boxer entering the ring is also stepping up to the, you know, the plate and going into the ring and taking everything on. On the more negative side, we can see how, you know, Uranus in Aries on the boxer degree for several months or a number of, I think it was two months, you know, a long time. So now it's gone retrograde and it's on a young, uh, it's on um, Aries 20, a young girl feeding birds in winter. So this is interesting in terms of the of um, charity, giving alms, helping those who can't help themselves, helping those who may not be in the place that they're meant to be, you know, because the birds are meant to fly south in winter. And uh, so it's a, it's a bit of an interesting one when you draw that in with the whole story with the refugees, you know, and, um, you know, the wanting to supply them, well, the need to supply, they have to be supplied with food and water and shelter and beds and clothing and all sorts of things. And, of course, this translates into our own lives, you know, the, the young girl feeding birds in winter, you know, uh, what do we do in terms of um, charity or helping? Or is it is it us that needs the charity and the helping? You know, are we the ones that really... Um, need to be, you know, cared for or looked after. So Uranus is, you know, I think the Venus Uranus is really helping with the whole Lilith, Juno, Sun at the lunar eclipse, you know, that that uh, in Libra, uh, Mercury retrograde, Venus yet, yet to go through, you know, uh, come out of its shadow. The shadow period is, uh, you know, hasn't traversed all of those degrees that it went retrograde on. That's not until October 9 when it uh, gets to the first degree of Virgo. So that's an interesting thing. Anyway, so what I'm saying in amongst all of that is that, you know, Venus and Uranus, uh, you know, they're getting, that's quite a good, you know, uh, trine. But we've got Mars with Saturn on a square that can be very uh, hectic. Um, I think it's going to be fine, though. But, of course, in, you know, for some people there's going to be uh, things that need to be taken care of that might not be that much fun or easy. It's not an easy time. But, you know, the more we the more we uh, accept our role in life in terms of, you know, that ascension in consciousness and whatever that means for us, you know, I mean, we've got all these different ways of, of looking at that um, and, you know, obviously uh, our, higher, our higher self dictates what that would be. Um, it's interesting how other people might look at us and go, ah, oh, she's losing it or she's not, or he or he, uh, you know, is, um, you know, does that astrology stuff or, you know, they can really judge people who are into the uh, esoterics and a lot of people watching this obviously are into what's esoteric and, uh, and I salute you with tea. But Jupiter is on a boy moulded in his mother's aspirations for him and and uh, it doesn't have, we don't care so much about the gender, although sometimes it can be extremely literal. It can be about, hey, how are mothers bringing up boys? And that's coming up a lot in the debate here in Australia with domestic violence. I don't, I don't want to talk too much about domestic violence. It's just that it's like, ooh, it's all the time at the moment because there's been so much going on in Australia around that. Plus, my daughter, Jess Hill, 
has uh, just won an award, and some of you will know about this. Many of you will probably know about this through social media. Um, that Jess ha uh, just recently won uh, three major awards for her journalism work in domestic violence. She threw herself into the whole story of domestic violence here in Australia for the last year and has produced uh, excellent uh, pieces of journalism that have won three major awards, including a gold award. And the, the awards are for um, excellence in journalism in uh, domestic violence. There was 177 uh, entrants and uh, they had uh, six categories with three people each in those. Jess was a finalist in two. So out of six, Jess was a finalist in two. Um, we didn't even realize there was a gold award. I hadn't even got that far. The, the night we were there, it was quite extraordinary. She won two and then uh, the gold that night. So out of seven awards that night, my daughter uh, won seven, uh, three awards. So, you know, the domestic violence thing's been really, really around. And uh, anyway, I do want to say I don't want to concentrate on that, but Mars and Saturn Square, you know, that, that are, and, you know, and Lilith and Juno and the sun, you know, being all... Um, involved in this lunar eclipse it's uh, quite extraordinary Juno being the asteroid of marriage uh, and committed relationships so anyway what I'm saying here is that it's a bit interesting that I, I talk about Jess because I just say what comes into my mind of course with this stuff and it's the children molded in you know it's the, it's the boy molded in his mother's aspirations for him but the way I quite often like to say it is children molded in their parents aspirations for them and what that means for us is like you know Jupiter's on that degree it's the 11th degree of um Virgo, and uh, and it speaks of, uh, you know, do we live up to the aspirations of others or do we live up to our own aspirations, you know, what, you know, if we were to write down, you know, what we wanted to aspire to, is that from our own heart or are we sometimes hearing what society says that we need to be doing, you know, what we need to be doing or could be doing or should be doing or whatever, you know, it's like, and, you know, and we have to be our own inner parent, you know, I mean, this is Jupiter, uh, Jupiter on Virgo 11, and being our own inner parent, you know, can really bring out those ideas of knowing where the messages might have got a bit wrong somewhere along the line, you know, about what uh, we're meant to do in this life. You know, and sometimes we might find ourselves in relationships with people who really don't approve of what we do, you know, whether it's our parents or our uncles and aunties or our friends or, you know, our spouse or whatever it happens to be, you know, uh, people shaking their head, oh, yeah, she gets into that stuff or he gets into that stuff. The degree following uh, Jupiter's placement is the bride with her veil snatched away and I find this to be uh, pretty amazing because, you know, of, because of all the things I have said previously in this recording, um, but, you know, but it also, you know, what it says to me is that in amongst it, you know, what we've got to do is we've got to remove that veil, we've got to take the veil off so that we can uh, reveal ourselves for um who we really are, you know, and, and sometimes we have to really take away our veil in order to have a better relationship, you know, or a better relationship to people or a, a truer relationship, you know. We might keep ourselves away from relationships by our attitudes, the things we say, um, social expectations, those sort of things. I mean, that comes from the, uh, the boy moulded in his mother's aspirations for him as well. Social expectations, I mean, that's what Jupiter in Virgo is really saying. It's an interesting time because before too long, um, from October 9, when Mercury goes direct and Mercury rules Virgo, we're going to have uh, Venus, Mars and Jupiter all in Virgo. And so wherever Virgo is in your chart, you know, that's going to be all lit up, you know. And, uh, you know, so it's going to be a lot of um, analysing, I guess, you know, looking at things, fixing up, you know. Virgo is very good for getting in there and saying, okay, let's make this correct let's make this good let's you know let's make this work um you know and of course there needs to be a certain amount of um analyzing in amongst that and i think that some people are going to realize that some relationships they're having and are not meant to stay in their lives i mean that's a big part of the message of the super galactic center with all this activity going over you know the dawn of a new day revealing everything changed and you know, the the, the, uh, the young people in spiritual communion around the campfire, you know, those early degrees in Libra, really talk about gathering together who they are in spiritual communion. You know, and the campfire can be something as simple. I'm, I see, you know, realms, of course, in the saving symbols. And the campfire doesn't have to be a literal campfire, although it can be. It can be a sweat lodge. It can be the internet. It can be a book you write. It can be a blog you post. It can be, 
the campfire can be my videos. It's like, oh, you know, people crowding around in spiritual community. You know, they're, they're, they're crowding around a central place, you know, that inspirits the group. And that's what that degree of the um, fourth degree of Libra is talking about. That Lilith is on that right now. The node will be going over it in a while, but not yet. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I think it's November before the node gets, you know, really going. It's going to be sitting on the first and second degrees of Libra for a long time, which is talking about freeing yourself and ascension. Uh, it's quite extraordinary. Um, a lot of learning going on. You know, I mean, I'm going to repeat what the Sun and the Juno are. It's a, um, a man teaching that it's, it's Libra four, five, <laughs> Libra five. A man teaching the true inner knowledge of the new world to his students. And where uh, Chiron is, and it has been for ages and ages, going back, you know, forward and backward, you know, retrograde over this degree, is the 19th degree of Pisces, and it's the master instructing his disciple. So we've got the master instructing his disciple of Chiron and we've got the, the, the man teaching the true inner knowledge of the new world to his students. And I do really feel that that is the Pope. Well, I, both of them represent the Pope. That's, yeah, you know, I mean, there'd be many other things. I mean, there's many ways. There's, a, there's you know, millions of ways that these Sabian symbols uh, show themselves in the world. It's just that the Pope is a big story at the moment and he's got an amazing message. I am a bit of a heretic. I have to. I will declare that here. I am a heretic and always have been. And so, you know, this part of me that just goes, yeah, yeah, a little bit. But, 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 the message is really fabulous, and I don't want to rain on anybody's parade about that because I know a lot of people are very excited about what the Pope is saying. Ah, oh, so Neptune, yes, Neptune, ah, oh, Neptune. So. <laughs> I go like that, it's just like, whoa. So Neptune is not really very well aspected in all amongst this. You know, we've got the we've got a square coming up between Saturn and Neptune. It's not yet. We don't have to really analyze that too much yet, although we are moving into that square between Saturn and Neptune, which is really asking us to look at our dreams and, and to ground our dreams and bring our dreams into reality. You know, and it can be where we come up against that, that wall again where we have to go, oh, okay, I have to learn something, you know, or I have to, you know, invest in this thing or, or find investment or um, fill out the paperwork it can be uh, about that so Neptune is on the um, uh, it's on the uh, girl blowing a bugle which is uh, uh, Pisces um, uh, Pisces 8, Pisces 8, a girl blowing a bugle. And so um, the girl blowing the bugle, you know, it can be where we ha where we feel like we've got to sound the call. Da -da -da -da. You know, it's like, you know, we've got to sound the call, we've got to do things, we've got to, uh, we've got to wake up from our complacency. So that's an interesting message from Neptune, which is largely unaspected um, in this. But Mars is moving into an opposition with Neptune, and that's going to be interesting. And it's almost like finding our place, like, mm, one of the degrees that's going to be highlighted by Mars in Virgo opposing Neptune is uh, Virgo 7. It's the harem degree. Interesting. With all the stuff and all the talk about Muslims and the movement of the refugees and all that. All the talk about marriage, you know, as well, you know, and our place in marriage and all this talk, you know, the harem. You know, and it can be where we say, no, no, I have to be, you know, in charge of my own, you know, not, not being, I've got to be the grand poobah, not just someone in someone's hair and where I just wait to get, you know, the beck and call of someone who calls me in and says, oh, okay, you can come in now, it's your turn. You know, I think Mars on, on the harem degree is saying, no, nah. yeah, no, nah. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh calling the shots and, and but the harem degree can be a fabulous degree of course you know it can be where we gather together with other women or men uh it can be men's circles there's no reason why i can't and it, you know and it doesn't even have to be about sex it's very much meaning sex as in gender there's a lot of stuff about gender that comes up that's that's you know really uh strange at the moment because there's so much uh discussion about domestic violence that i'm treading carefully over those gender issues um anyway yes it's it's all happening so the harem the harem you know it's like uh, are we uh are we the grand poobah or are we you know the one who sits on the side you know with the seven veils you know it's very much about the veil with you know the bride with the veil snatched away it's very interesting how they're lining up those all these uh uh, uh symbols that show uh marriage or um commitment or being true to oneself, you know, quite extraordinary. 
So, um, oh yes, and the next degree on from Mars, when it's exactly opposite Neptune, it's on the um, young girl taking a first dancing lesson. And this can be about, you know, learning the steps of the dance. And it can be, you know, again, it's the teacher and the pupil. You know, are you, you teaching the dance or are you learning the dance? You know, are there other steps that you need to learn? Such a fascinating time. Um, you know, I mentioned Pluto briefly. I'll come to it. It's the fire worshipper that um, uh, meditates on the ultimate realities of existence, and that is Capricorn 13. And so it's like, why are we here? What are we doing? What is the reality of existence? You know, and the fire worshippers came out of um, the Middle East. You know, and uh, mm, Iran and all those areas. Anyway, um, but anyway, I don't want to get into all of that. But um, yeah, it's, but it's such an interesting time. This is a very interesting lunar eclipse. And uh, just wondering if there's anything else that needs to be said. I usually make these a little bit too long, I find. But um, oh, Vesta. Vesta is exactly opposite. Well, it's one degree off, but we don't. And it's retrograde. Uh, it's on the sixth degree of, um, of Aries. And um, that's the square brightly lighted on one side. And that is the degree also of the lunar eclipse, the, the degree following the, the lunar eclipse, it's the degree of the moon, the, the square brightly lighted on one side. And so I think this is really showing us that we need to have uh, illuminated solutions. You know, we need to look, you know, the square brightly lighted on one side, that's where Vesta is, opposing the sun, the Venus, the, the Mercury, the Lilith, and, and uh, the North Node. So the, the square brightly lighted on one side is very freeing for the butterfly that shot through with the dart of the first degree of Libra, you know, which Mercury goes direct on that degree. The amount of energy that's really happening are, uh, on this supergalactic centre, especially those degrees at the beginning of Libra, is extraordinary um, through the agency of the North Node, but also through Mercury. And as Mercury goes back over the supergalactic centre in the week following, the um, in, in the couple of weeks following, the... Um, this lunar eclipse is really going to give us that added opportunity of being able to see how we can rise up in our consciousness, how we can create a brand new day for ourselves, how we can learn and we can teach, how we can see the manifestations of our creative spirit. You know, it's the man watching uh, Aries, um, no, Libra 6 is a man watching um, his ideals taking a concrete form before he's in a vision. I mean, that's the law of attraction. Mercury is going back over that, and then you know, in the in the days following the lunar eclipse, and then it goes right back to the butterfly shot through with the dart. That it goes on the um, when it goes direct, and it goes over the dawn of a new day, revealing everything changed, and the ascension of consciousness degrees, and the whole thing again. Anyway, I don't wanna, I don't want to drag this on too long, and uh, if you're still paying attention, then uh, that's great. <laughs> anyway. Um, yes, what to say at the end of this. Now, I'm taking readings again if you want to uh, have a reading with me. Um, you can have them at, uh, the, I reduced the prices some time ago and I haven't put them back up yet. Um, I feel the need, I will be doing that. So I can concentrate on my writing more, but at the moment I'm taking readings. And so you can go to www.saveinsymbols.com and you can uh, click on there. I think it's under the About Linda or something. Um, I should know. But anyway, it's right there uh, on my uh, website and I hope you enjoyed that and um, I wish you uh, the best in this lunar eclipse and what an exciting time and uh, 